on this episode of Resi Week, the Sonos upgrade debacle and learning to say no. All this and more on this episode of Resi Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is Resi Week episode 210, Cheeseburger Solution. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Peerless AV, driving technology through innovation. And by AV Pro Edge, manufacturer of next level video distribution solutions. Welcome to Resi Week. This is your weekly wrap up of all the latest news and stories for the residential AV industry. I'm your host, Matt D. Scott for AVNation.tv. And this week, we are pleased to be joined by Bob Archer. He is the senior editor at CE Pro. How are you, sir? Good yourself, Matt. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Then we have Todd Mares. He is the director of emerging technologies at Peerless AV. How are you, sir? Good, man. Nice to see you again. Good to see you, bud. And last and most definitely not least, we have the uh, <clears throat> the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Vin Bruno. He is the CEO of Rava Home Theater. How are you? Very well. Thank you, Matt. Great to be here. Thank you all for nice joining us. Todd, nice to see you, Robert. You too. How are you doing, Vince? We are going to uh, kick this off. We are recording on Friday instead of Monday as we will be uh, in Amsterdam for ISE. So let's kick this off with a, a press release that comes to us from uh, aviation.tv and the good folks over at RTI. They recently named Joe Roberts as their new CEO. He is going to lead the company through uh, some expanded initiatives to continue to grow that RTI uh, control platform. So congratulations to Joe. Vin, I, I know as we were talking pre-show, you have uh, some uh, a history. You know Joe fairly well. Um, jump right in there for a sec. Well, one story that I want to share is, you know, uh, I, I was doing a, a Northern California swing uh, when I was the CEO of Cedia. And one of his guys, you know, spotted me on Twitter, said, hey, Vin, you got to come. And it so happens that, you know, my wife and I were then spending the weekend in Sonoma with her sister. So it was just a, a drive past uh, uh, Core Brands headquarters. And I popped in at 3.30 on a Friday. To my amazement, Joe and his team were with me on a Friday night. It was past 7 p.m. <laughs> I mean, we were just doing industry talk, laughs, fun. And uh, you know why I know Joe is going to be phenomenal in this role? He is going to be wildly successful at RTI because he was managing so many brands at core brands. They were individual companies. And by the time I was leaving at 7 p.m., and I said to these guys, I said, I can't believe you guys are with me on a Friday night. And... Um, he said, Vin, I'm trying to sell you on a couple of these brands. You want to take them with you? <laughs> yeah. And we left. He's going to be just terrific uh, at RTI. Yeah, I agree. I think having someone come from such a broad mm -hmm. uh, expanse to be able to kick back in and you know, join RTI and, and help them continue. Because they've been expanding. We've watched them expand uh, the last couple of years into a lot more than just remotes and processors so it'll be very very fun to watch all right gentlemen let's uh, kick off with our first story of the day this comes to us from a residential <clears throat> systems and my good friend henry clifford what can we learn from the sonos upgrade debacle um so this one hits me at a bit of a good bad i'm annoyed excited all kinds of all kinds of feels on this one um for for one, I, I'm a full disclosure. I'm a I'm a Sonos dealer in my day job, and this caused pretty much the same problems that Henry found. Uh, if you somehow managed to miss it, uh, Sonos sent out an email to their entire customer base, explaining to them that uh, five products were going to die and be essentially no longer supported, and your system was going to blow up. Uh, I'm obviously paraphrasing a little bit. Bob, I want to start with you on this one. This has honestly been, in in my memory, probably the worst PR issue that a manufacturer's had. 
uh, especially one that is so public. What do they have to do to clean up this mess? Can they clean this up or is this going to leave that bad taste uh, in, in not only dealers' mouths, but definitely end users? Well, I think that it, it's probably a result of them being tone deaf to the market, not understanding what people want, what people expect from audio products. But uh, with that being said, I, I have a feeling people will quickly forget about it and move on. As long as their, their systems work, people are going to be happy. Dealers were put in the, the most awful spot in all of this because they were going to be left basically having to deal with all these customer service issues with all these systems potentially going down. Thankfully, dealers aren't in that spot anymore. So um, I, I think people will quickly move on. I certainly think Sonos is hoping that people move on. <laughs> yeah, I think they are too. I, I, I will say, um, in, in my personal experience to kind of echo Henry's, uh, we got those calls. We got those, you know, berated uh, emails and calls from clients saying, what the heck is going on? How does this happen? Why did you sell me this stuff that is now a paperweight? Todd, how do you tell the, how do you tell the message in this? How do you, how do you properly spin this to your clients? Because uh, I'll tell you, we've been trying Mm -hmm. And we're not failing, but we're definitely not succeeding yet. How do you, right. how do you use a dealer flip this? You know, um, well, you know, as far as the whole planned obsolescence thing from a manufacturing standpoint, you know, that's what I deal with here, you know, yearly essentially. But uh, the thing that hit me with Sonos and kind of the same way you did uh, state, Matt, is that you weren't expecting it, right? I mean, it kind of came out of nowhere. And, and you know, I've seen over the last year or so, taking some functionality away, I'm probably the only person left with music still on my phone that I was throwing to my Sonos system. And that got, you know, okay, you too. Oh, yeah, right, <laughs> so, right I mean, there with you. you know, that went by the wayside, even though Spotify is easy enough to use, right? Um, but when they start talking about, well, now you got the lowest common denominator and I've got four or five pieces in this system in my home or in a customer's home that I've put in, um, it, uh, you know, it's, it's a little different from the Apple situation, right? Everybody mm -hmm. expects it from the, the phones in general, right? You're going to every year and a half or so you're going to upgrade and, but you can still use the old phones like you did. They're not taking away functionality from those. So uh, it's as far as how I'm dealing with it, with a, a few of my kind of side projects that I've done since I've been at Peerless. I mean, I've been, Sonos has been my cheeseburger for the last 12 years, essentially for home audio. So it's just, it's such an easy system to, um, to use, to understand. Uh, luckily, I've not gotten any calls per se from any former clients at this point that um, they're concerned about anything. But from my standpoint, it's hitting me. I'm looking at my gear and my rack at the house saying, okay, am I going to deal with this? I could send it back for 25%, you know, pay uh, buyback or something like that, but I'm still going to be out, you know, a grand to update what I need to do. Um, it's, it was completely, um, out of the blue for me, obviously for many people didn't expect this coming. Uh, again, I haven't really had to deal with it with clients too much. I just know the personal pain I'm feeling. And, uh, and then certainly the individuals around uh, Pure AV that I've installed these systems for at all. You know, you get the president coming and knocking on my shoulder saying, hey, so what's going on with the Sono system you put in for me, you know? <laughs> so, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, I think for the people that I've installed it for, I think they will will deal with the functionality that is still left there. Um, but going forward, I've got to kind of question myself as to, is this really going to be part of my cheeseburger solution anymore? And that's the one question I've got in my mind right now. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I want to share something, you know, and, and it, it is something that we need to learn from, right? You know, the late uh, George <clears throat> Feldstein, uh, you know, the founder of Crestron, he told me a story once and he said, uh, he goes, our society is very forgiving of the automobile industry, right? Think of a car, right? As a machine, think of a car as a machine, he said. He goes, you know, you put 90,000 miles on it and you get rid of it because it starts breaking. He goes, but at 60 miles an hour, that's only 3,000 hours on the machine. And keep in mind, Crestron's manufacturing, we, we utilize machines that we're running 24 hours a day, seven days a week putting, you know, tens of thousands of hours on, on those machines before we had to start maintaining them. So with Sonos, right, you know, what can we learn from that? Why are we not forgiving? I know it's inconvenient, 
some of these uh, Sonos devices, the lowest common denominator, I believe, is what, the early 2000s. Yeah. So, you know, and, yeah. and then that is incumbent upon us to go back to our previous clients and provide those technology refreshes. So how many hours did the machine of Sonos have before it becomes obsolete? Oh yeah, I, I have one in my house that is obsolete, that has to get replaced, <laughs> that literally runs 24 seven. It has not stopped in, since we had a power outage. <laughs> it lasted longer than my generator. <laughs> right. You know, Vin, that, that's a really good point because one of the things that a uh, actually a client brought up to me was that they don't view their Sonos devices as speakers or amps. They view them as computers. Mm -hmm. And they're comfortable with, now they weren't comfortable when we totaled up how much they have to spend to replace it, but they were comfortable in that knowledge of, hey, this thing, I've had it for 10 years. Mm -hmm. If I've got to replace a computer after 10 years, I'm okay with that. So it is a very good point. I want to bring in uh, Katie McGregor Bennett. She's joining us from Amsterdam, which is why we missed her on the intro, as you can see by the, the, the clogs behind her. <laughs> are those yours or are those? Well, okay. So oddly, I have had my feet in those clogs, but it did take some doing, but no, they're, they're not mine. But I expect They're nice. Those. I mean, they're gold and I think that they would be hellaciously uncomfortable on a trade show floor, but I mean, yeah, I, I expect to see them on the floor. Just, just, you know, just to reflect. <laughs> you know, it's funny though, because if I move my head, they look like bunny ears. So, see, so perfect. There, right? Okay. Katie, <laughs> let me ask you this. You, you deal with, obviously, uh, the marketing side of this. You deal with um, tons of manufacturers as well as integrators, uh, again, from a marketing pitch. Yeah. Why do HTPs deal with this at a level in which sometimes might verge on harassment? Whereas you're never going to have a client walk into Best Buy and have a hissy fit because they have to replace this. Right. They'll do right. it to us. Why do they do it to us? Is, is, it, is that the negative of the relationship that we build? Oh man, that's okay. So this is a this is a supreme can of worms, um, and I, <laughs> we, we could take the whole show just talking about this. And maybe we sh actually, the good point is maybe we should kind of break off and have this conversation because the core of the issue is communications. Mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't say the part of the core of the issue, the one that touches me closest to to the bone, is communications. And you know, to your point, this was the, you know from a PR perspective, though PR is what I do, um, not executed well. Poor, poor communications plan in my view, but part of the problem is, is that you've got a mainstream consumer brand who's trying to cater to custom. And I gotta just say at this point, we're in the custom world, we are on a precipice here where we may over custom ourselves into the abyss. And I am I'm custom to the core, but when I see <coughs> us getting so incensed about an issue like this, that happens every day out there in the mainstream, to Vin's point in the automotive, you know, they will roll a car off of the production line, knowing that it has faults that they're going to recall. And as consumers, we accept that. Mm -hmm. So I think the custom world, you know, we, we do have to kind of grow up a little bit in our maturity in order to stand up against the issues that we have to take a stand on. Mm -hmm. Products like this are going to sunset. It is like a computer. If we start selling it with those expectations, and, and not to say that you guys and gals on the, on the front end are not doing that, but I think that we allow the customer, the consumer to push us into a corner a bit where we have very few defenses left. So when a manufacturer like Sonos does what they need to do, which is end of line something, sunset it, move on, <laughs> the communications have to be there to support that evolution of the product. This to me is a complete communication fail. And, I, and I'm not in on any level. I have no association with Sonos whatsoever, but just the way that it was communicated out to the consumers, consumers are calling you guys on the installation level. That's just horrible. Now, yeah. Okay, now, so I'm, I'm just gonna say that that's horrible and none of us should be exposed to that, but I think we knew this was coming. Sonos hasn't been a great partner to custom all the way through since the inception. They've been to Cedia, they've left a giant carpet pad in the middle of the show floor that irritated all of us. We didn't understand it, where did they go? They weren't supporting us. So they've just kind of shown their colors a little bit here. And I think that the more that the custom side of the world can kind of rise up against that and say, you know what guys, this just doesn't work. I think we'll have more of a seat at the table. Is it going to solve the problem? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> this is going to happen again, you know? Yeah. So I think the, the challenge is, is that we're trying to bring in a product like Sonos and incorporate it into our, our very custom integrations and show the consumer a much better end experience, which we're brilliant at doing as a community. But when we rely so heavily on these consumer mainstream products, 
that we have zero control over. <laughs> danger, danger. And I, you know, unfortunately, I mean, there, there really isn't a fix to that because in order for customs to survive, we have to bring in mainstream, but we have no control over what they're going to do on the other end of it. So I think, you know, ultimately it's just the best that we can do is improve our communications from our community out to our customers. As soon as we know that there's changes coming and we hear, you know, we know that technology is changing. So I think that we need to have a, a more of a consistent conversation with our consumers to make sure that they understand how changes in evolution and technology may affect the products that you've installed and that there probably is going to be an expense to them down the road, just like new tires for the car, just like changing the oil, just mm -hmm. like putting a new windshield wiper fluid. You know, like there is a maintenance aspect to a system. And I think that we just need to do a better job as a full, full blown community of making sure that our customers understand that just like a computer, just like a car, there is maintenance there, you know. So long winded answer, but it's, you know, I think it's, 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 whew, it's scary. It, you know, because we need, we have, if we're not going to, if we're going to not customize ourselves into the abyss, we've got to play with these kind of products, but the customer's one that gets caught in the middle, you know, and it's, it's, it's tough. This is what happens, right? What we just experienced. Well, I think so Katie makes a great point, you know, co consumer electronics have always been this way. You know, what we do as a professional industry, we're not accustomed to it. Back in the day, you know, my company engineered, uh, you know, uh, inputs, uh, analog inputs, uh, RGB to uh, Apple G4 computers. Um, and we, we put it on a tray that inserted into the computer. And the, the executives at Apple, they absolutely loved it. They, they thought we were heroes because now they can sell these systems for nonlinear editing. And he said, but Vin, in a year, this could change and your tray won't fit. Mm -hmm. And no one at Apple cares. So while they loved us for the moment, they don't care. You know, it's a great point because I got in a, a Twitter debate over this topic. Mm -hmm. And one of the tweets that I, I ended up using with pretty much every one of my customers was, again, to paraphrase that I, I refuse to get outraged over a tech product that lasts 10 years mm -hmm. without it having a problem. When... <laughs> I'm tweeting this back on an $1,800 phone that I'm going to literally throw in a drawer in probably a year and a half, mm -hmm. never to be used again, to be given to my kids to play videos when we travel. Right. It, it just, we have you know, to Matt, figure a way around this. Excuse me. Um, yeah. You know, I think the one difference though with audio products is people not, may not realize that in this particular case with Sonos, there's processors, there's RAM, mm -hmm. there's all this computing tech. And it, they, they, the, the public thinks of audio components like the way we thought of audio components 20 or 30 years ago. Yep. You have a linear amplifier, you have a passive speaker and whatnot. So they're, they're not expecting any sort of obsolescence with any of these products. And then to come out with it, you know, um, I, I guess we ought to expect it. Maybe we're naive. I, I don't know, but I think that was part of the problem. Oh, completely. And, and again, to Katie's point, it's, it's a messaging issue. If we, if we change that messaging, then e even not just the messaging that they sent out, but the actual, how we sell that product, how we serve that product, that conversation changes. Hey, thanks for watching the first segment of this week's episode. To catch the entire show, please click the link below or visit avnation.tv. That's avnation.tv.